This week, the National Park Service celebrated its 100th anniversary with their week of celebrations and events including free admission to all national parks between August 25th and August 28th. If you had the chance to get out and enjoy one of your national parks, I hope you had the time to consider also the $12 billion backlog in maintenance projects at all the national parks. President Barack Obama commemorated the event by announcing a new national monument, the newly designated Katahdin Waters and Woods National Monument was made possible by a donation of some 88,000 acres by the co-founder of the company Burt's Bees. It's also a very controversial new park. A study released in the Nature Communications Journal this week finds that the economy and the population of the world are growing faster than the footprint of humanity on the planet. That might be a surprising finding for those of us following the development of sprawl around the world. Specifically from the study, analysis finds that while global population grew 23% and the global economy grew 153% between 1993 and 2009, the global human footprint grew only 9%. Among the most popular news stories on Planetizen this week, was one sharing the findings of a study by the Pew Research Center about the success of Toledo, Ohio's efforts to attract millennials to its city. The new research finds that Toledo ranked 455th out of 521 U.S. cities in attracting millennials to the city between 2000 and 2014. The strategy of developing so-called Rust Belt chic, it seems, was not enough to attract millennials in Toledo. Compare that to success stories so far in cities like Pittsburgh and Detroit. Finally, in the state of California, very significant land use regulation failed in the state legislature. The proposal by the governor of the state, Jerry Brown, would have relaxed land use regulations for affordable housing developments by allowing affordable housing developments to be permitted by right. The proposal also would have allowed $400 million in funding for those types of projects. The setback for the legislation is a serious blow to affordable housing efforts around the state, which has some of the most expensive housing markets in the entire country. And that's it. I hope you'll join me again next week for the Plan Edison Week in Review.